Yeah, I can't wait. Um, like you said, we've been doing it for a little bit this year, and uh, every time he's come out, he's been consistent, um, and his command's been great. I, I expect him to attack hitters and, and ultimately get his stuff uh, out and over the zone, and I think he's got a good chance to go a long way today and, and uh, against a team that's relatively aggressive, and I think it should play well for his, to his strengths. Give us a little scouting report on his arsenal and the way that he has had success when he's been dialed in this year. Yeah, he's got a, a good uh, jumpy four seam. Uh, short arm action, so it's a little harder to time up. It looks like it's going to take longer, but he actually gets rid of it quickly and uh, good times of the plate. He's got a four seam, a two seam off of that. Um, a pretty good changeup that he relies on to both hitters. Um, a curveball that he uses first pitch or put away pitch, like with two strikes, and then a back foot slider um, that he's been that's developed a lot since I first caught him in Harrisburg. I think that that's the main pitch that. Um, that he's been focusing on throughout the course of the year. And I think um, as that develops, he's going to develop as well. So um, everything else is there. I mean, the stuff's there, the, the velo's there, the mindset, the work ethic, it's all there. You see it every day with Rutt. And uh, he's a, a great dude. He takes the scouting report very seriously, um, easy to talk to during games. So I'm, I'm excited to go with him. For you, you've only been up here at the big league level a couple weeks now, but now it's your job to steer a guy through his major league <laughs> debut. What do you, how do you plan to attack that that job tonight? Yeah, I don't know. I think just feeding him confidence, uh, making sure he knows he belongs here and he knows that uh, he can get outs here. I think that's going to be the number one thing. Um, the lights are brighter, but it's the same game. That's what Big City told me when I came up, Matt Adams. That's what he told me when I came up. Um, so I'll probably have very similar uh, advice to guys coming nowadays. Um, just because of what Matt said to me, and I and I took it and I kind of ran with it. I liked what he said. It it put my head in the right spot, gave me confidence. You know, it's the same game, um, just brighter lights. And I think uh, if Ruddle once he gets his first inning jitters out, I'm sure he'll be cruising and be locked in. So I think he'll be fine. Now for you, Drew, uh, the Nationals get you at the trade deadline a couple years ago, and you've slowly been making your way up through the the minor league system. You went to the Arizona Fall League after last year, I, I believe, and put up really good numbers, and you've carried that into this year, and obviously advancing from Double A up here to the major leagues. What? did the fall league experience do for you do you feel like that really was a jumping off point the way that numerically it looks like it might have been yeah i'd say so um i actually went there two years the, f the first year i went there um was with us and i was in high i went there and then last year I was in all over with injuries and then i went there again and the, that second time i went there i got i got pretty lucky and pretty blessed that uh, tim darty and micah franklin were both there two nats hitting coaches two guys that were there every day in the cages with me and I think we built off of because I had a good finish to last year um, in double I was healthy I started to find my approach again and find my barrel and that carried over that momentum kind of carried over into the fall league and we kept hammering that same approach and that same um, routine and I think um, staying on top of that preparation beforehand with those two guys in specific um, helped me get really comfortable with doing the same thing every day and feeling that same thing every day and you know like a lot of people say this, you got to stay in the middle in baseball. You can never be too high, never be too low. And I think those guys are pretty good at kind of hammering that across to you as well. We had always heard uh, about you as you were coming up, your defensive abilities behind the plate. Where did that develop? How, how did you become, you know, certainly not a finished product. Everyone has room to grow. But how did you become the strong defensive catcher that, that people tout you as? Yeah, that started um, mainly in college. I think coming in as a freshman at Missouri State, we had a very, very good team. And uh, the first thing that the guys told me is, hey, we got the bats. We don't need you to be, you know, 330 bombs like some of the other guys on our team. We need you to catch. Can mm -hmm. you handle a staff? Can you be? Can you focus defensively every single day? Talk to the pitching coach every single day. And that kind of twisted my uh, or flipped rather my mind from like high school where I'm the I'm the man and I'm just hitting everything. I'm hitting 500 all the way to uh, college where I'm in, I'm with a pretty good program, not power five, but we were a uh, top 15 seed, you know, going in and there was some strong competition we played. And I, and I realized like, what can I bring to the team if I, as a freshman at the time, what, what can I bring to the team if I'm not quite there hitting yet? And I think ever since then, the catching has always just taken that step in front of my hitting ever since then. Uh, regardless of how I do hitting wise, I'm doing better now, obviously than I was when I was a freshman in college, but um, that's never really left me. It's always been catching above hitting for, for that reason. I think Coach Gutton and the staff there really helped me. Well, Drew, thanks for the time. Have fun tonight with Jackson, yes, and uh, best of luck going forward. We've had a lot of fun watching. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Drew Millis will be behind the plate tonight catching Jackson Rutledge in his big league day.